Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So good morning, uh, welcome you all to this course on the inorganic chemistry of life, uh, principles and perspectives. Uh, first of all, let me a uh, bit introduce myself. Uh, my name is C. P. Rao. I am a professor in the Department of Chemistry, Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. I am in the area of inorganic chemistry, bioinorganic chemistry, inorganic materials and inorganic related aspects of various uh, uh, things and connected even to those of the biological systems as well. Okay, uh, first of all let me uh, let us take up a, a query. What do one understand from this uh, title at all? So when you look at the uh, title, the title has as a word like life and life uh, means we have various forms of life and these various forms of life as we see around us. We have uh, life in the form of uh, plants, life in the form of uh, animals, life in the form of uh, you know, aquatic uh, organisms, life in the form of human and variety of these life is there. And we know even from very uh, early day uh, school uh, uh, science studies that in every life the chemistry plays an important role. But was what additionally that we I like to tell in this particular thing is it is uh, the chemistry which is being uh, uh, supported by inorganic ions and inorganic elements is the one which is playing an important role. Uh, there is a great uh, emphasis by the inorganic species and ions which control various forms of the uh, life uh, processes in other words the chemistry of life. So, it is this aspect that I would like to bring uh, to your notice in the, in the form of this particular course on inorganic chemistry of life, uh, principles and uh, perspectives. So, let us look at uh, for a while how this change, uh, the title, how I have taken this uh, inorganic chemistry of life as a title that suits for this particular course. Okay, so uh, if you look back into the history, and even if you, even in your uh, the high school studies or bachelor degree studies, I'm sure you must have been talked about that there is a biochemistry that goes on uh, in body, in the cells, everywhere. And uh, in the early 60s, people have found that there are some inorganic elements which tend to uh, in, in, you know influence the biological processes, biochemical processes etc. And it is what the biochemists have started utilizing this and they have started using inorganic species as supplements, supports etc. So therefore they called it as a inorganic biochemistry. So it is a biochemist uh, interpretation of the inorganic role uh, in the biological studies is by inorganic biochemistry. And this has continued for almost uh, two decades or so from 60s to 80s where people have started worrying about what exactly is the role of these elements. And that is where actually the inorganic chemists jumped into the area of this uh, um, chemistry and started looking at the more details how an inorganic ion or a species is influencing the chemistry uh, in the biological context. And they started probing in terms of their role, in terms of their uh, uh, their function, various aspects of these. So therefore, therefore, this has got into a uh, kind of a area called the bio inorganic chemistry, where inorganic chemists have started interpreting the biochemical aspects influenced by the inorganic elements. So therefore, and then this continued for quite some time. Then the um, scientists have realized the uh, kind of an inorganic elements are not just limited to the uh, limited to the enzymes alone but they are extended to various other components of the biological system for example other biological molecules such as uh, dna carbohydrates 
uh, lipids all these have certain kind of an influence or interaction by the inorganic elements. In addition people have also found the uh, cells uh, you know tissue organs also have got a role of inorganic elements functioning in them. So, therefore, all this together uh, it has broadened from simple bioinorganic chemistry to a biological inorganic chemistry where in the role of not only the inorganic chemist, biochemist, biological chemist and spectroscopist and the microscopist. So, variety of uh, the um, you know scientists need to uh, you know support all this activity. So, therefore, this biological inorganic chemistry is indeed a very highly interdisciplinary uh, in nature, but being uh, uh, inorganic chemist by myself. So, I would be uh, mostly uh, confining myself to the inorganic uh, chemistry aspects in the biological uh, 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 biological processes, biological systems, etcetera. But, but still I have taken my course title as inorganic chemistry of life because the inorganic elements role is found now even in a variety of um, medicinal aspects as well, organs uh, and transplantations, tissue materials. Uh, so, there are many bio, bio um, materials also having inorganic chemistry. So, therefore, to encompass not only the enzymes and the biomolecules to encompass all these kinds of processes. So, therefore, I have chosen now a, diff, uh, uh, a title that to comprise of all these plus the other aspects of biomineralization, uh, biomaterials. Uh, you know organ synthetic organ etcetera etcetera all putting together it has come to inorganic chemistry of life. But with the limitations of the course I can only give certain level of principles and certain uh, uh, these principles will be highlighted through certain kind of a perspectives. So, therefore, the title of the inorganic chemistry of life is very apt and well suited for this particular um, kind of a uh, course to talk about the inorganic chemistry aspects. And one another aspect that I need to tell you at this stage is that the same course can be taught by a biochemist, can be taught by a biological chemist, can be taught by an inorganic chemist, uh, can be taught by a spectroscopist. But taking the real examples, let us take the real examples and try to look at that. One of the example that I have uh, taken in this particular uh, slide is that uh, the protein that carries the uh, oxygen and it carries through the blood and it carries to the all the organs of the body and through this. So, this particular protein uh, uh, is known as the hemoglobin in, in, in uh, when you refer to the human system. So, you know the, the oxygen is required for every life. So, the uh, respiration processes where the lungs are involved and then this lung pump, lungs pumping the oxygen and then the oxygen being transported by this protein uh, across the different organs of the body through the, uh, through the blood. And that is what uh, uh, I would like to sort of highlight this. Okay, so, this has got two different things. One is this uh, spiral kind of a uh, system, uh, ribbon like structures. This is coming from the protein and there are some components here. The component here is the uh, heme, which is heme is nothing but the iron with the porphyrin. And there is one such here, then one more here, then one more here, and then one more here. So, there are four such units are there, therefore, this is referred as the tetrameric protein. And at each protein, the ion center is uh, important because it is the ion center which will hold the oxygen and which will transport and which will release uh, to the organ or the, in the body. So, therefore, this uh, uh, protein is functioning by the inorganic uh, elements and we will look at the more details how it is functioning etcetera at a little later stage. Right now my emphasis is uh, to convince you that the inorganic elements are heroes. Uh, so, the heroism of the inorganic element can be seen. Uh, as in this case by sitting here uh, in the heme portion and then followed by uh, the other aspects of it. Okay, let us look at 
Uh, another example, it is not only uh, transporting the oxygen, obviously the oxygen is also stored. Oxygen is stored uh, in human, oxygen is stored in sea lions, oxygen is stored in other kind of animals, uh, elephant seals, etc. etc. Okay. So, these are stored in uh, various uh, uh, parts of the body like muscles, the blood and lungs and you can see corresponding uh, ratio for that. So, uh, the human uh, you have total storage is somewhat less and the storage in the sea lions is at least twice and the storage of the oxen is uh, much more uh, in the uh, is elephant uh, seals this is at least four times to what we have in the human. What do you think is the reason? Uh, I am sure you must have uh, be thinking the size of the human uh, size of the body. So, size of the body of the human versus size, size of the body of the sea lion versus the size of the body of the seal. Obviously, they require more and more uh, when it comes to the elephant seals and that is the reason why you require uh, more uh, storage therefore, you have the more pumping later on into that too. So, this is again a protein like the earlier one and you have a ribbon like structures etc. Here you can see very clearly this is the, uh, the ion center and this is the heme part of it and the whole thing is called the myoglobin when it comes to the human system. Myo refers to the muscle. So, therefore, the muscle storage of the uh, oxygen. So, therefore, the myoglobin part of it and this if you uh, compare with the previous one here you could see the four such units one blue here one red here, another blue here, another red here, totally four are there and if you look at here you have only one such. So, it is basically one fourth of this. So, when you have a one fourth of a protein it is acting like a storage and when you have a tetrameric protein it is acting like a transport. So, I will explain this at much later stage not at this stage now. How can it uh, a, a, a four times the same protein can behave differently. So, keep that as an anxious uh, um, uh, query which I would be explaining maybe several hours later in this course not uh, now maybe at least 10 four lectures uh, uh, later in that. Let us look at one another example. Okay. So, you know that the body requires a lot of uh, iron. So, where uh, re, why, why body requires a lot of iron? The body requires a lot of iron because as we know the, there are large number of iron based enzymes in our body. So, therefore, a lot amount of iron is required. So, this iron being to be uh, need to be transported to each of the organ of the body. So, therefore, that is done by an enzyme uh, which is shown over here and this transport the transports the iron ions across the uh, across the body uh, across the uh, uh, body through uh, to various organs of the body and here again you see that uh, you see that the, the iron is sitting somewhere here the blue center and then you have protein protein having uh, uh, ribbon like structures spirals and then flat regions etc which as is promised to you I will come to this at a much later stage maybe after a 2 3 hours of explanations of this okay but nevertheless I'll uh, certainly explain at this stage what I wanted you to uh, understand is that there is a metal ion called iron the iron is sitting inside the core of the protein and this particular protein takes this iron ion across the blood and transports to the various organs of the body. When you have a less amount of the iron in your uh, blood which you come to know by various tests, various uh, clinical tests then you can have some supplement. The supplements uh, ions a variety of iron supplements are available today. I will explain also this when we come to the iron story when I explain you the, about the iron story. So, right now you need to know that the iron is present uh, in the protein uh, in the middle of the proteins in some core. Uh, I will explain this core uh, more detail later stage. So, now you understand there is a huge protein there is a small inorganic ion. So, do not try to underestimate the small ion with respect to this. You know that the protein molecular weights are generally in several kilo daltons maybe some 10, 50, 100, 
1000 Daltons, whereas iron you know only 57. So, you have so much of a difference in the weight that does not mean that the iron is uh, can be ignored. So, but iron plays a very uh, important role as I mentioned earlier the heroic role of the iron is being played by this particular element. So, for the time being just take that the iron is present in this and the total protein as a constituent of that not simple constituent of sit to sit alone, but to function in this particular for the transporting the iron ions. Look at another example, you know that I am sure from our uh, general uh, knowledge that we know that our body has a lot of proteins. Okay. Also we know that we eat a lot of protein based stuff, you can see here on this right side of this slide you have all these uh, protein based stuff. Is the protein that we have in the body is the protein that we eat? If you were to think so, it is wrong. So, the protein what we eat and the protein what we have in the body are quite different. So, we, but to have to make this protein in the body you need these proteins. So, which means the protein that we eat are not directly uh, converted as the proteins of the body requires to go through some process. So, this process is referred as the digestion process also known as the hydrolysis. So, the protein has got peptide bonds and the peptide bonds can be hydrolyzed. So, the when you hydrolyze the peptide bonds what do you get? You get amino acids. So, therefore, you have amino acids coming up. So, it is these amino acids which are picked up the, by the body and use these amino acids again and make the protein what is required. So, the protein that is required by the body is synthesized in the body, but by using the protein that we eat not directly, but after hydrolysis. So, who does this hydrolysis? So, that is done by enzymes uh, called peptidases. So, one example shown here is the carboxypeptidase. In this you can see here that there is a ion is sitting over there and bonded to certain things, which I will come back to you. Uh, later stage. So, you have a protein surrounding and you have an ion, a zinc ion, I am sorry, it is a zinc ion, not the ion, it is a zinc ion. So, it is a zinc containing peptidase. So, its name is zinc containing carboxypeptidase. So, therefore, this is capable of hydrolyzing the proteins that we eat okay, quite selectively. All those details I will explain you much later stage, not now, much later stage. Okay. So, therefore, the proteins that we eat are not the proteins that we have in body. The proteins that we eat are hydrolyzed, converted into amino acids and these amino acids are rebuilt into your protein and uh, so that is what happens. Rebuilding mechanism I will explain you later. This particular slide I wanted you to appreciate there is a zinc center which is involved in the hydrolysis or breakup of this particular protein uh, material that we eat. Let us look at one another example. Okay, we not only eat, uh, uh, you know, uh, the protein stuff. We are very uh, fond of eating a lot of uh, oily stuff, fatty uh, stuff too. So you can see those things are over here. Let's see, this is obviously the kind of a uh, to our liking. So, but this carries a lot of fat. This carries a lot of oil. So this oil and uh, the uh, fats that we take needs to be digested as well. And this is again digested in our body and there are enzymes again you can see the ribbon like structures and this uh, structures of uh, this kind and all these things is a kind of protein. Inside you can see this black uh, ball like structures in the blue centers and the red one. So, this black blue and red one is the heme center where the red one being the uh, being the ion center. So, these kind of an enzymes are known as cytochromes. So, this is a cytochrome like enzyme. So, in the cytochrome like enzyme you have a heme which is embedded inside the protein. If you call this as a core, in the core this ion is sitting in the form of an ion uh, heme. So, it is a heme containing enzyme. So, this particular center is responsible for, uh, uh, for the um, digesting this oil stuff. How does it do? We will see the details there, but it will do something called oxidation or hydroxylation. So, the oil stuff fats will be hydroxylated by this enzyme and, uh, and thereby 
this oil and fats are being digested uh, in this. So, at the moment what you need to know from this particular slide the whole protein and inside you have a core in that core you have a heme in that you have a ion center. Uh, so, therefore, this ion center is not just sitting idle doing a lot of function reactivity and that reactivity will convert the oil and fat into a soluble one. Once it uh, makes into soluble one it will go into various processes it can be even excreted as well too. So, let us look at one another example. So, it is not only that. So, that means I have been showing you in the last couple of slides that what I have been showing you I have been showing you there is a protein there is a core and there is a metal center. So, it is doing some kind of a uh, reaction in that. So, now I have shown one another enzyme which has got both the zinc and copper and this enzyme does a different kind of a function. What is that different kind of a function? You know the body uses oxygen that means cells use oxygen. So, when the cells use oxygen part of the oxygen is converted into oxygen based radicals like you might have heard something like uh, superoxide. So, what is superoxide? When you add one electron to oxygen it becomes oxygen uh, anionic radical O2 minus dot. So, this is like this. So, you add take uh, oxygen and add an electron to that. So, this becomes O2 minus dot. This is what is the superoxide radical that is formed uh, uh, in this particular uh, thing. And these in the cells these are continuously forming and so that kind of a things. So, if they are formed what is the problem to us? So, if they are formed there is a problem to us because uh, such a kind of uh, system would basically reactive this is a O2 minus is a, a radical as you know very well from our simple chemistry the radicals uh, react very fast. So, if they react with the tissue if they react with the cells the cells will break the tissue will break. So, that means all the contents in the in the in the cells and tissue will be open out. So, that means that is oxidative degradation. So, that kind of an oxidative degradation will make transform biological processes and that is where you can see here the two phases uh, one with the wrinkled skin one with the nice smooth uh, uh, skin. So, where you have the radicals dominating process and they sp start spoiling the uh, tissue and you take some antioxidants the antioxidants will fill your enzyme and this enzyme will function and uh, work very well and this kind of a pills are there for the uh, containing this enzyme zinc copper superoxide dismutase this whole thing. So, this has got both copper and zinc you may get a, a curious thing why both copper and zinc is required so, you will have to wait for some more hours of uh, teaching at that time I can tell you what exactly the role of this. Right now uh, thing it is not only one metal ion you can have more than one metal ion too. So, is a, there is a, a, a copper center there is a zinc center there is a copper center there is a zinc center also in this. So, this particular. So, what what, what do we need to learn from this? There, there is a metal enzyme containing zinc and copper this particular thing will uh, convert the radicals into the oxygen. So, what will it do? So, it will convert this uh, O2 minus uh, dot uh, into simple O2 and uh, and H2O2 uh, kind of thing. So, this is creating uh, uh, and this reaction will be taught to you a bit later with all the uh, balancing etcetera. But right now we need to understand is that what is on the arrow? The arrow you have is enzyme. So, okay. so this enzyme converts this uh, particular uh, O2 minus radicals which are generated into the less harmful uh, H2O2 and non harmful O2. How it does uh, etcetera will be learned later stage, but definitely it will be learned in this particular uh, uh, course. And uh, let us look at uh, one another example. Uh, so, this is an example where say uh, sometimes you think that you would like to work without getting uh, uh, fatigue. Okay. So, otherwise uh, you get fatigue. So, uh, to get the uh, fatigue, uh, so therefore you need to work restlessly. So, you need no, you need to be out of fatigue. So, to be out of fatigue means you should be strong enough. 
So the, you know very well uh, uh, we take uh, vitamin B12 pills to make ourselves strong, to regenerate our energies, to make ourselves fresh so that we can do things much better. And there are various foodstuffs are shown over there which have got the vitamin B12 and uh, the B12 can be absorbed by the body and this is supplemented and the corresponding uh, uh, thing comes in the form of the vitamin B12 which is shown over here structure. All the details will be given to you later on. So, vitamin B12 is a coenzyme this functions along with a large number of enzymes. So, therefore, with working with large number of enzymes uh, with that uh, uh, the you have a cobalt ion. This is a cobalt ion. This looks like a porphyrin, but it is not porphyrin it is called corin ring. Uh, so, as I said I will explain you the details later. This cobalt ion is capable of doing uh, the uh, providing uh, this process to regenerate your uh, body strength in that. So, let us look at uh, it is not only that you it can even um, uh, you know there are some uh, the inorganic ions, inorganic ions obviously uh, uh, add the ionic strength and this ionic strength difference will make the difference in the co concentration. The concentration difference will uh, come in the form of a uh, form of uh, a flow or the pressure. So, therefore, such kind of flow or the pressure in blood can be regulated by the uh, ion transport. So, in this particular case, so this is a cell membrane and there are some proteins the proteins this is a kind of thing and so the ions going in and going out mechanisms are there and these are called uh, ATPases pumps. Uh, why they are called ATPases because they use the ATP for their transport phenomena and I will be explaining all that what is ATP what is not an ATP all this I will explain you there. All that you need to remember now is they require energy to process that and you can see the protein over there the protein has a kind of a channels. So, these channels are used uh, for ions to take it out and bring in. So, the entire thing uh, is ion balance. This ion balance is done by the proteins called ATPages and that will maintain the uh, blood pressure aspect of it too. And uh, one another uh, example I can uh, tell you even the plants. Uh, use the sunlight and then you know convert sunlight and carbon dioxide as the inputs and these two are converted to carbohydrates and the oxygen. And this is done by uh, a manganese cluster this cluster is present over there. So, therefore, uh, is doing a lot of things. So, it is not only in human even in the plants too. So, let us look at one probably the last example in this is that where see there are some plants like the peanut plants etcetera which takes the uh, nitrogen uh, into the ball, uh, into their uh, plants and convert into ammonia. So, the nitrogen is converted into ammonia and this uh, is done in a, a cofactor called iron molybdenum cofactor. So, uh, so this iron molybdenum cofactor uh, is uh, to, through this particular coupled enzyme which I will explain you convert the nitrogen into uh, uh, ammonia. So, let us try to look at what I have tried to explain you till now is that try to impress you that there are large number of enzymes in the body and these enzymes having a metal ion, metal ion species or heme or non heme whatever be the thing is the, the ions of the metal are making a very important impact in the reactivity therefore, they act like a hero and of course, we are going to study all these uh, in this particular context. So, for this uh, I, I think in the uh, so that will be the kind of a very uh, gross kind of an introduction where at the end I would like to leave in your minds that the ions of the bio, uh, uh, inorganic are sitting in the biological system and doing wonders. Uh, uh, thank you very much.